Hey guys, have you ever decided, yeah, you want to watch your favorite movie, get your DVD out, pop it in the DVD player, fire up their surround sound system, and when the sub comes on, all you hear is this. Oh, crap. There goes my expensive subwoofer. What am I going to do? It's dead. Even if you plug the audio or unplug the audio cable, it still just makes that horrible hum. Well, hopefully today, I'm going to show you how to fix that for just a few bucks and a few pieces of, uh, a, a few piece of, a few tools. And apparently, if I'm as incompetent uh, so that I can't even speak and I can do it, then you can too. Anyway, let me show you what I've got here, and I'll show you what we're going to get ready to do, and then I'll walk you through the process of doing it. This is my sub. It's a uh, Mirage... Uh, downward firing with forward base port and you can see I've already got the back of it off it's a Mirage Nano sub can't remember if this was a 10 inch or the 8 inch model technically but it's a nice little sub it's been a great uh, item and uh, I really love it first thing what we want to do is power it on and while it's turned on unplug it what that does is the circuitry is still in use and it should in theory drain the capacitors inside there so that there is no charge left in them when we do that capacitors on the size that you have inside here can carry a massive charge in them and can if not kill you leave you with a nasty burn so turn that off let me get this disconnected and I'll show you what the problem seems to be here now I have my circuitry removed from the amp. Uh, most of these uh, of any quality will just connect in. There's your speaker cable and there's a uh, LED uh, that plugs in there and everything else is pretty much self-contained. There is the transformer that converts your 60 Hertz 120 volt AC current to whatever voltage is required from your um, or for your amplifier. Here's your amplifier circuit. These are the amplifier transistors themselves. That's what does the work of increasing the volume uh, from small to large for the sub to work with. And these capacitors, these giant capacitors right here, are usually responsible for filtering out that 60 cycle hum that you hear. But if you take a close look at these, notice that they're bulged up on top a little bit. That's not supposed to look that way. These are supposed to be flat. Let me grab, now I got uh, some replacements on eBay, or not eBay, uh, Amazon. Um, and let me grab one out of the package here and I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. Okay, here's a replacement. And if you look at the top of it, see how it's nice and flat there? And it has that little cross on it. That cross is because these are uh, aluminum electrolytic capacitors. Basically, they have something akin to tin foil, uh, two sheets of tin foil rolled up in here uh, with a thin separate, uh, piece separating them, and they're filled with oil to help cool them. And over time, they can just start to go bad. Their various things can happen. Uh, electrolysis occurs in the aluminum can get um, corroded inside the oil can expand and it will expand this capacitor and those crosses are cut on there to give it away to relieve that pressure so it doesn't explode it just pops when you see it start to uh, bulge up like these are that means that process has started now the difference is these just have a black piece of plastic covering up that starred area so that you don't see it but if we were to remove the um, you know this outer piece from uh, the old ones and look at them you would see that they're damaged like that that means they are no longer doing their job of filtering that home out so what I did is looked up the values these are 63 volt 4700 microfarad capacitors and ordered a set of replacements. These are 63 volt 
4700 microfarad capacitors. These are Chinese made. Um, they were about two bucks a piece on Amazon, so and they came in a package of five, so pretty good price. You can get these at websites like DigiKey or Mouser um, from manufacturers like Mishcon and some of the other name brand. And they'll run you anywhere from four to ten dollars a capacitor for something like that. But basically all we've got to do is take our soldering gun, take those off, put new ones in. When you do this, you want to pay attention to this stripe right here. These are polarized, uh, which means electricity flows through them in one direction only, so you have to make sure you put that stripe in the same direction when you uh, put it out. And one way to do this, since these this has these two heat sinks, I can just write on one of these heat sinks, stripe here, <laughs> since these both are in the same direction. Something easy like that. So now, we're going to have to take a screwdriver and uh, take some of this stuff apart, take pictures and make diagrams, whatever you need to of where everything's all plugged in so you don't lose track of it. And uh, we're going to take that off so that we can get to the other side of the circuit board and get to the process of taking those capacitors out. Okay, here we have this completely removed. And my next steps, if I take a look, the capacitor, or each of them has this glue goop stuff down there. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to be affecting things. I may have to take an X-Acto knife and kind of try to get that off. I'll take a look. On the bottom though, right there, see that pair right in the center and that pair of terminals, those are where it solders through. Now, just to make sure, you can take a pair of insulated pliers like this and touch the two terminals together like that and any residual charge inside the capacitor will drain out. Matter of fact, if there is one, you'll hear it go snap and it's liable to scare the holy crap out of you. But that's why we unplug it while it's still in use though, um, because that should not happen if you do that. Um, we don't want to have anybody getting scared and having a heart attack here. But we'll have to plug in our soldering iron, get it hot so that we can uh, just touch the soldering iron to those to heat it up and then pull from the other side and that capacitor will come right out. Um, assuming that glue isn't really bad. So let's take a, take a look at that. Also, I do see something else there on the capacitor. It says 85 degrees uh, C. That's the operating temperature, max operating temperature of that. The new one should meet or exceed that. This one is 105 Celsius. So this one has a higher temperature. You'll notice they are different sizes. Um, this one is a little bit taller but a little bit narrower. You're actually liable to find some depending on the age of the capacitors that you have in your circuit. Um, the replacements are quite a bit smaller. That's generally going to be okay. Newer technology, newer uh, materials inside the capacitors do give them the same functionality as the old ones if the new ones are smaller. So that's perfectly okay. These high voltage, high uh, temperature ones generally do tend to be a little bit larger. And if you are ordering them and they have the pins on the bottom side like this, that's called a radial, R-A-D-I-A-L configuration. You'll usually find these in two forms, radial, which means two pins sticking out of the bottom, or axial, which means one coming out of each end. Um, both are acceptable. You just have to bend the pin over to make it work for you, but I was able to get radial replacements, so that's exactly what I'm going to use. So let me see if I can work on getting these capacitors out, and I'll plug my soldering iron in and get start uh, letting it get hot. Manufacturers, could you please not use that glue goop in there? That is a pain to get out. I basically had to use the soldering iron to burn it out, and I hope I didn't damage anything else in there. There's that little thing over there. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, potentiometer, I got a corner of that, but I think that's all just the plastic, the surrounding housing stuff. 
think everything else is going to be pretty good. So now we just got to put our new capacitors in place, solder them from the bottom, and then snip the ends off. Let me get that stuff ready and I'll show you how it's done. All right, I got the new capacitor sitting in. The stripes are on the stripe side. And to hold them in place, I got the legs bent out just a little bit here. That's all we need to do, nothing fancy. But I'm gonna turn these up like this. And I'm gonna have to take my solder and solder this into place. Let me get an extra pair of hands here and I will show you how to do that. Okay, got my helper here. So basically, I've got a hot soldering iron. See, let me get the junk off the tip of it. Okay, and I got my solder. And I'm just going to pl place this down in here. And melt it until it fills the hole there. See, it, it's, you can see it flow right into it when it's hot. It just puddles up. But you don't want to stick your uh, soldering iron too long because you can actually get it overheated, the area that you're working with. You want it to flow in there good, though. So that looks like we've got a real good bond. Oops. See, that one looks questionable there on that one side, so... There we go, that looks much better. It looks all filled in there. There was a little gap there. So that all looks good. And at this point, you just wiggle these little tabs back and forth to break them off. Or you can get a pair of snips, like these. Maybe better than the ones I've got. I, I don't have the right snips for these. See, that leaves it a little longer than I like, but it's going to be down where it's not in the way. Let's try these wire cutters and see if this will do a little bit better job. Obviously not. I think we were doing better just doing this. Wiggle like a loose tooth. Wiggle like a loose tooth. There we go, make sure everything's off. So now I've got to plug this back into the other piece over there and make sure everything still works. Stay tuned. Okie dokie, here's the moment of truth. I've got it plugged into power. Nothing blew up at me. Turn it on. I don't hear a buzz and I don't hear anything exploding. And I have a power light, check that out. So for about four bucks roughly, I was able to fix this for myself and save the cost of, um, I don't know, these things run $200, $300, something like that now. It was a little bit more when I first got it, but prices have come down thankfully. So I hope that has given you a little bit of, um, potential thought that maybe you could fix this yourself too. If nothing else, if you've got one of these subs and you don't want to spend the money right away and you want to maybe see if you can fix it, take this to a friend that works on computers or something that uh, is handy with electronics, uh, one of the kids that's in the robotics club, something like that, and see if they're handy with a soldering iron and if they would be willing to try. I mean, you can get these capacitors on uh, eBay, Amazon, Mouser, uh, all kinds of places pretty darn cheap so it's really worth trying it and if it doesn't work hey you only spent 10 bucks maybe so no big deal but potentially your 10 bucks could save you a lot of money so <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later and I hope you got something out of this